Is the scale on the RCBS Chargemaster accurate? I'm going to test it and find out. So I've been using the RCBS Charge Master for several years now. It only goes to one decimal point on the scale, and so I started to wonder a little bit about how accurate the scale is. I have one gun that, that shoots right on at 39.9 grains and 40 grains, it falls apart. And so I thought, you know, if, if the scale isn't accurate, because with one decimal point, it's gonna have to round up or down. If you had enough inconsistency in the rounding up and down and things, uh, you could have a pretty good spread of a half of a tenth of grain or so. And so I picked up another small scale that's really accurate, goes to two decimal points. I figured I'd test it out, and so I did, and I came up with some sort of surprising results. A handful of my guns, they use about 40 grains of H4350. So I'm gonna program both of these to 40 grains. I've already got the scales turned on, and I've already got them calibrated. And then here I've got the Gem Pro. Now that I have everything set up and ready to go, um, I'm just gonna start running these scales. Just hit dispense on each one. Uh, once they're done, I'll move them over to the Gem Pro and, and see what the Gem Pro says. And then I'll just record them. I'll do 20 or 30 or 40 or so. So we get a good average and a good idea of, of what each scale is doing. So the first scale says uh, that it's at 40 grains exactly. So I'm gonna dump it on the Gem Pro. Dump this over here. Let it get back all the way to zero and hit dispense again. So this first one says 39.98, and that's uh, that's pretty dang close. I'm gonna stab a couple grains out, get it right to 40 exactly. Dump it on, better get to zero, and hit dispense. And this one says 40.06, so I'm gonna write that down. So the high on scale one is 40.1 and the low was 39.94. The high on scale two is 40.1 and the low on scale two is 39.92. Extreme spread is typically a number that represents the difference between your maximum and minimum velocity out of a particular gun with a particular load. For today's experiment, I decided that extreme spread was a good way to visualize the difference between the maximum charge weight and the minimum charge weight of each scale. With the high for scale one being 40.1 and the low being 39.94, the extreme spread equals 0.16. With the high for scale two being 40.1 and the low being 39.92, the extreme spread is 0.18. The extreme spread between the two scales was pretty consistent between the two, each of them being just over a tenth and a half off. The results of this test confirm my suspicion that the charge master had a fairly large swing in the lowest charge it threw and the highest charge it threw. Because of the way that most of my guns had acted over the years, I suspected that the scale on the charge master might be the issue. If my guns are sensitive enough that a, a tenth of a grain of powder is the difference between a good group and a bad group, you can see here that I'm well outside of that parameter. Another thing that I was curious to see was the extreme spread between two consecutive bullets or two consecutive loads, because both of these bullets would be next to each other in the box. On scale one, that number happened to be the actual high and low for that scale. On scale two, it happened later through a difference of 0.12 grain. I was curious what this number would be, mostly because I think that would affect you the most as you're shooting. Uh, if you had one, your first one was really high, and so you adjust down to make it work, and then you would hit low. It can be confusing. It can be a little misleading. You might start making some adjustments that you didn't need to make. It's those types of scenarios that cause you to lose some confidence in your gun, and you start to scratch your head and start to wonder what's going on. First of all, I'd really like to run this same test with a different scale, another scale that I know is really accurate, and see if it produces the same result that the Gem Pro produced. I do know that since first running this test about a year ago and using a more accurate scale, I've had very, very few flyers, a lot less frustration, and a lot fewer shots that just didn't make sense. So I do believe these results are accurate. So to answer the question, should you use the Charge Master? 
it depends. If you're loading plinking rounds, absolutely use the Charge Master. It's a huge time saver. Distance is also a factor. I don't know that it makes a difference to get a whole lot more accurate if you're shooting 600 yards and in, but definitely 800 yards and further, you're gonna notice the difference. Also, if you don't mind an occasional flyer at further distances, the Charge Master's great. My final conclusion is time. You can spend dozens of hours doing dozens of things to your brass, your primers, your bullet, the charge weight, but if you're not out in the field shooting, improving your technique, learning wind, it doesn't matter. Over the last several years, I've narrowed down all the things that I feel like improve my accuracy the most. It might be because I have a tool that makes a certain process faster, or it might be a step in the process that I find very critical, like charge weight, so it's worth spending more time on. But the most important thing is for you to figure out those things that you feel improve your accuracy the most. Don't spend a lot of time in the reloading room, but spend a lot of time in the field shooting, learning wind, learning your gun, and improving your technique.